Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is your host, Eclipse Down Bad, and today we are finally back with another airline review. Today we are actually reviewing an airline that I've never reviewed before and we're at their Antalya International Airport. Please correct me in the comments below. I already know I pronounced and butchered the name of this airport, so there's that. But before we get into the airline review, please consider subscribing and liking this video and sharing it. And other than that, let's get right into the flight review. So first of all, yo boy a little bit rusty, you know, so my ratings right now are not the best, but obviously we're gonna start off at the airport as always. So this is the airport and right off the bat, this airport is huge. I don't know if you guys could see it, but my ass, my computer right now, like fans are at 100%. My frames is at like 20, 30 tops. Like this thing is huge. And this isn't even the entire game. Like we spawned all the way somewhere over there and we took like a highway to get over here. And this airport is still huge. And you know what I like about this airport? Even though it's big, I feel like they did a pretty nice job filling up the space. Like, they make it seem very, like, alive and realistic by having all these cars, having all these decorations and everything. So right off the bat, the exterior of the airport, it's amazing. Because not only is it, like, a big airport that's really grand. Like, when I first spawned in, I was like, wow. I was like, shit, damn. Yo, this place big ass shit. So exterior, well-deserved, 8 to 9 out of 10. There's just, like, some design choices I don't like. Mostly, like, the materials and stuff. Because it does look a little bit grim dark, you know what I'm saying? But let's get right into the interior. So this is the interior and god damn. So we have security checks over here and everything. And here's the rest of the airport. Holy shit. One of the worries that I had when I walked into this airport was that I was scared it's gonna be one of those airport where it's like really big and there's nothing inside. You know what I'm saying? But obviously this airport is they did an amazing job with the interior basically like filling up the spaces like with tiny shops like these you guys know what i like feel about airports i feel like i'll rather take a small airport with a bunch of designs over a large airport with nothing in it but this is like the best of both worlds like not only is it big and grand it has that wow factor they really did a nice job filling up the space and everything like we got shops and shit we got an airport market we got tiny clothing stores over here unfortunately you can't walk into it i don't think you can but it's just, oh, never mind. But it's just really nice to have stuff like these all over the airport. Just to make sure that your, like, passengers doesn't get bored or anything. We're just gonna ignore this side, you know. That side we're just gonna take out of the equation. But from what I'm seeing over here, like, the main display, it is amazing. So, as always, your boy is fucking still poor as fuck, so we can only get economy class. And we're gonna get our luggage and everything, so this is actually really nice. Okay, we just dropped off our luggage, and I'm gonna just go check out the rest of the airport, because I'm low-key excited, yo. Over here, we have the CIP lounge, which I'm pretty sure is like, you know, an upgraded lounge or something like that. Unfortunately, yeah, I can't go in there, but... You know, I could point in my camera and see what's going on. I mean, it doesn't look too bad, it doesn't look too shabby. You know, obviously I can't see everything inside, but it looks okay. So we have elevators down here. Hey, yo, we have like Burger King. Like I said, this airport did a really nice job filling up like dead spaces. Because that's the issue of majority of the larger airports that I have, is that it's way too big. And there's not enough space in there and all that. Here's even more security measures. You could just walk through it. There's like nothing really to check you. And then here's the second part of the airport. And like I said previously, I'm pretty sure I got the point across, but they did an amazing job filling up space. We have even more stores over here. This might be one of the better airports that I've seen in a while. I'm not sure it's just because I've been gone from the row aviation scene for a bit. By a bit, I mean almost a fucking year. But, like, this airport is really nice. They did a really nice job filling up the space. We got even a bookstore over here. 
we got even more cafes. And it's not copy and paste too. Like they didn't just take one store and then paste it all the way throughout. It's actually different stores with different items. And this restaurant over here, yo, this restaurant is lit. So they have even more stuff down here. So there's some more gates down here and there's some basically some minor shops down here. Nothing that big, but I think this is the gate that we're going to be using. So yeah, here's the gate. I basically checked out the rest of the airport. So I'm going to just sit here and just wait for them to call upon economy class. The overall airport rating, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Mostly because the exterior and there was some space wasted as seen in the beginning of the video where there's a whole section of the airport just blank. But like I said, I don't blame them for that because they already did a fantastic job filling out the majority of the airport. From the stores, to cafes, to lounges, to everything. The design and the layout of this airport and what they did with the space is impeccable, no cap. So as we're waiting to board our aircraft and waiting for them to call upon economy class, I'ma just say, like, I feel like I have ignored this point so far into the video, but yeah, yes I know, I've been gone for a year. Hopefully, I won't be as inactive. What I'm planning to do is try to make at least two vids a month. I will try my best to do that. The main reason behind this is that right now, I'm running my own small business. Shout out to my small business, The Peachy Shop. And I'm still working my part-time job alongside my part-time business. So, you know, your boy's trying to get to the bread and your boy's in college right now. So basically, I work 36 hours, full-time college student, 15 hours a week. So I'll try my best. Like, I'm trying to do less hours at work, trying to focus less on my small business, as ironic as that may sound. And I'm going to try to get back to YouTube because I really do miss y'all in the community. Shit. And since I already brought up my small business, you know, I already got to plug it. If you guys want to buy stuff and support me by buying shit through my small business, because I, I really don't want to do tiers or patrons or anything for no benefits. I feel like that's a scam. Like, you know, those YouTubers who like, oh, give up $5 and you'll get a special rule. I feel like, no, you don't get shit out of it, right? So if you guys want to support me, the best way to do it is to, to support my small business. Uh, I'll leave the Instagram and the link of the website down in the description below. So please go check it out. Please go share it. If you do want to buy stuff from me, I'll leave a discount code here on the screen right now. Use this discount. It'll give you a 10 to 20% discount, all right? And thank you. I really do appreciate anyone who buy my merch. Thanks. And now they finally called upon the economy class. So I guess it's time for us to dip. I'm gonna try to scan my ticket. Yup, here we go. We got to get on a second bus to get to our aircraft. Hold up, man. Man, let me get in, man. I'm trying to get a seat, yo. I'm not going to cap. I don't remember what time they said we we're going to board, but it has been a bit. I feel like we've been waiting for about 20 to 30 minutes, maybe. I Maybe I highballed my numbers, but it's been at least like 15, 20 minutes. We are finally here at the aircraft we're supposed to board and I'm gonna just wait a bit because every like it's a whole like zombie apocalypse in there. I am not gonna try to fight anyone over seats so I'm gonna just wait in here for a minute before I board the plane. Alright, I have managed to grab myself a seat in the middle of the aircraft just because it's easier for me to take thumbnail pictures and all of that and right off the bat delivery of the aircraft. It's from Star Alliance. Like I said, I've been from Roviation for so long. I'm pretty sure this is an alliance group. I think this existed even before I left, but I just don't know much about it. So the livery isn't that bad. Like, I like the little Star Alliance logo back here. I like the overall livery. It's simple. It's clean. I think it could be polished up a little bit, like over here. I don't know if that's a decal or anything, but I feel like some parts of the aircraft can be, like, polished up. But overall, it's not a bad livery. So the interior of the aircraft, I actually like it very much. It's simple, yes, but it's simple in a nice way. They did a really nice job color coding the entire interior, like the red, the white, 
Also, this really warm color, like this lukewarm color, I really, really fuck with. Like this champagne color, you know what I'm talking about? And like tiny details like these separators and all of that, they are really, really nice. Overall, I think I'm gonna have to give this aircraft interior and exterior wise maybe like a 6 to 7 out of 10, maybe. My main issue is that like nothing really stands out. Like the aircraft is well done, don't get me wrong. It's really well made. It's basically in the most simple terms, it's above average. Nothing's really outstanding about it, but like they basically did nothing wrong, but nothing's like wow. Like, I had more enjoyment just checking out the airport than I did checking out this aircraft just because I feel like this is like a really forgettable aircraft, you know. But that's not a really bad thing. Like I said, sometimes it's just better to keep things simple. So I think I'm gonna have to give this, like I said, 6 to 7 out of 10. Well deserved 6 to 7 out of 10, though. Hey, yo, I know y'all saw that. Low key, I was wondering, hey, yo, what are infotainment screens at and shit? Holy shit, that was smooth. I think that was my first time in Royal Aviation that I've seen that. Where the screen flips out and it actually kind of works. What the fuck? Okay, so we're finally about to take off and not gonna lie, the whole process of this flight has not been going too well. We have spent approximately 50 minutes in game now and I have 50 minutes worth of footage as I'm speaking and we only started to take off. Hey y'all that's kinda lit though how we have a plane in the back also going down there as we're flying up and as we're taking off, hold up that's actually kinda lit shit. And that takeoff was actually beautiful. Like, I'm lagging a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see on the footage. But the takeoff by the pilot was amazing. It was smooth. It was not bumpy at all. Overall, great takeoff. Okay, so even though we're not exactly cruising yet, they already sent on a message about the mills. So let's basically check out our menus and send in our order. So here's our economy menu. So like I said, the way how they made it is really nice. The menu itself looks amazing and it's not just a blank piece of paper as you guys can see. You actually get to like flip through it. So let's go to page two. Let's see what we have for our main courses. So we have like breakfast, omelet, toast, smit with cheese. But obviously I think we're gonna get dinner. So that grilled sauteed chicken with butter and rice. Shit, that don't look too bad. And then for beverages, yo, they have juices, they have drinks, they have hot drinks. I think I'm gonna just have to go with lemonade, you know what I'm saying? And then do they have dessert? No, unfortunately. So it's just drinks and then the meal itself. So yo boys is gonna put in the order for the chicken and the lemonade. Okay, so we're now officially cruising and I just sent in my order, so hopefully I get my food. Or else I'm gonna just have to eat ice cream and coke that I got from the airport. Two hours later. Okay, I have just received my food according to the staff, so let's check my inventory. I have my chicken right here, but unfortunately I do not see my lemonade. But you know what, your boy has coke, alright? I'm gonna just drink coke. Alright, so let's review the food. Realistically, this is gonna be a short review. I only have legit one item, here it is. And unfortunately, half of it is blocked out by the seat. So I guess we're just gonna have to do with what we have. Right here, we have the food. And the, the whole display that they have for it is actually really nice. Like, the utensils are wrapped around and the paper and everything and the napkins. We have the actual chicken itself over here. I think that's bread and I think that's like rice, rice, bread, chicken. And then we have some other snacks on the side which are really well made as models. And then we have the little fancy water cup, a second loaf of bread, I think the dessert, a side salad and some dipping sauces I believe. So overall, I'll give the food models here, I think I'll give it like a 6 to 7 out of 10. It's sort of the same situation with the plane. 
where nothing really stands out, but everything's well made. So it's like, it's not shit. It's definitely above average, but it's like, you're not like really surprised or impressed by it. It's just like, oh, that's nice. Like that type of vibe. Also, there's no food eating animation, despite the fact that you do have a fork in your hand whenever like, when I clicked on this, it did give me the fork, so this is just weird. Like, I feel like if you're gonna do that, you might as well just include the food eating animation. But, I mean, still a well-deserved 6 to 7 out of 10 for the food. And I'll also like to say, I would encourage having a larger selection. Because, like, there's basically 3-4 entrees. Decent selection of drinks, but there's, like, no, like, appetizers. There's no dessert. I mean, I guess the food model itself has like a bunch of other stuff on the side, but like, it'll, I feel like it would just be better if I had just had more selection, in my opinion at least. So we are finally beginning to land right now, so I'm gonna just speed this part up again, so, you know, enjoy the background music. You know, since we're stuck here and since we're waiting for them to resolve the issue, I might as well give my final rating. I think I'll give this flight, this overall flight, I think I'll give it like a 7 out of 10. The reasoning behind that is that, first of all, the airport definitely carried 100%. The airport was definitely the highlight of this video. There's not many chances I get to say that, like usually it's the aircraft or like the experience, but this was 100% the airport, they implemented a really efficient and smart system that utilizes AI and actual staff members, and it's really nice. The airport is just fantastic, really big, has an amazing wow factor, impressed me, and they filled it up to the brim with decorations, and it was just basically one of the better airports that I've seen. Moving on to the aircraft and the food model, like I said, it doesn't really strike me in any like impressive manner. It's not like, hey, yo, look at this. It's like, wow, damn, look at that. It was just all right, you know. Nothing really stood out like the airport. So I think that was kind of disappointing to see, you know, because I had really high expectations after seeing the airport. So I think this is more on me than the group itself. So I was just kind of disappointed when I saw the aircraft and the food model. So, like I said, it's still really good. Like the plane and the food model, they, they still get like a six to seven out of 10. That's still above average, all right? That's still amazing, but it was lackluster compared to the airport. And finally, moving on to the staff and the whole processing time and how smoothly this flight went, I think I'll give it a six out of 10, mostly because of how like, I wouldn't say boring it was, but most of the time was spent waiting. Like, after I finished reviewing the airport, this was pretty boring for me. I'm gonna just keep it a buck with y'all. I'm gonna be honest, it was pretty boring with me after the whole airport review. And I could tell they tried to make it interesting by giving you a lot of magazines, which I do appreciate, and I think that's a great idea. And also, I feel like the staff response time could have been faster. To be fair, I think in the plane, they only had like two flight attendants. And there was at least like 20 to 30 people on this flight. So I really can't blame them for that. That's just staff shortage, I feel like. So overall, this flight, I feel like deserves a well-deserved 7 out of 10. I think that's fair to say. So that's my review for this flight specifically and for Turkish Airlines so far. I mean, overall, this isn't a bad flight, especially considering the fact that this is like my first time back after like a year this could have been way worse i'm gonna keep it a bug with y'all so overall not a bad flight i really did enjoy it especially after a long ass time of not going on a flight at all yeah so unfortunately i think this is just going to be the end of the vid we can't go outside so thank you guys for watching especially if you made it this far please like and hit the subscribe button and become part of the notification gang. And other than that, I'll see you next time. And this is the Eclipse Down Bad, signing out. Peace.